Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and does the idea of developing games on the go appeal to you? Maybe uh, on the bus, on the toilet, driving down the, well maybe not that last one, but the idea of actually developing games on your phone is one that appeals to a lot of us, and this one is one of the first apps that really does it right. Now what we're looking at today is GDevelop. Now I've covered GDevelop a number of times on this channel. It is a free and open source game engine. There is a online cloud-based system, and honestly you're going to want to use the cloud-based stuff if you're going to be developing on your phone, but I'll show you how you can get it really cheap in just a second. Uh, but here, let's go check it out. This, this is running entirely in my browser. This is available for Windows and Mac OS as well. I'm going to show you a simple platformer that is available here. Let's open up a new project. We'll cancel out of our old one. And here is GDevelop in action. Now, the big thing about GDevelop is it is a no-code game engine. So you've got everything you need to create and construct levels, such as this platformer right here. And I mean everything. So for example, this main character here, uh, we can edit it and we actually go in and we can change out uh, the, the frames of animation. There's actually a built-in animation editor here. So if we want to create our own sprites, they are built into the engine itself. There's a level editor, as you can see here. And then your programming is done through this visual spreadsheet approach. And this is what makes developing games on your phone actually work is because the, like, for example, the Godot game engine is available on Android, but unless you're using an Android tablet and you have it hooked up to a mouse and keyboard, the experience is pretty crap because your on-screen keyboard takes up half of your screen. It's just going to be the nature of the beast with any kind of traditional programming language approach. So if you're trying to develop things like one-handed on your phone, it's just not going to happen. So this is the programming method behind the GDevelop game engine. Well, the big announcement they just made is you can now develop games on the go. So if you have an Android device, uh, you can now grab this on the Google Play Store. Uh, you've got all access to everything that you've seen. And if you have a cloud account, you can obviously create your application, save them in the cloud, come back to your desktop, work on them there. So you can use it as just kind of an added screen. You can also use it as a testing environment. So instead of deploying to your device, you can actually build and run everything locally to your phone, which is some pretty cool stuff. You have access to pretty much everything you would expect, but you're going to really want to get that cloud version of it because you actually can't really save up to the cloud as easily. You get really limited in what you can do in that regard. But even at a free tier, this should be pretty usable. So uh, it is now available on the App Store. For those of you that like to uh, think different, well, keep your fingers crossed. There might be an iOS version at some point in the future. So stay tuned for that. So that is GDevelop, and it is now available on the phone. It's nice to talk about it. So here, again, is GDevelop running in a browser on my desktop. And here is it running on my phone. Now, if you saw the earlier screen, it is basically the exact same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll open up this same project. So you got project creation here. You have access to all of the tutorials. And here is my phone doing this version. And here is the desktop version over there. So I can grab sprites. I can move them around. By the way, I should be able to save it. And I don't know if this will automatically update or not. Let's move this guy over here and save and go back to my phone. Okay, I don't think we're getting live syncing. Okay, it's kind of hoping that that would automatically happen. It does, but you see here, we have control over the level environment. We've got control over your player. So for example, down here, I can go in and edit that player and we have access to all of those animation tools again. So if we want to go ahead and create new sprites, we can do so directly here. Uh, you got control over, again, all of the scripting logic is available here. We can set behaviors for it. So this guy has a uh, built-in platformer object behaviors. We could add a new behavior in for it. This is kind of predefined stuff that kind of shows you, you know, common game development tasks. You don't have to do any coding here. You literally just drop a behavior on it and then, um, you know, configure some of the settings. For example, here, this platformer object has uh, animation names for running, jumping, falling, and so on, and other settings available there. You also got control over variables and uh, some tutorial shows you how to do so. Now, one thing you may find is this screen can get a little bit tight for doing level editing. So if I want to change my level editing, well, we can actually work in landscape mode. Now, one of the things I found is for certain tasks, it is definitely handier to work with it in, um, you know, normal phone mode, especially for even programming. But for level design, I find it works best in this mode. So the, the properties page down below, it's kind of awkward. So when setting properties, I actually find it better uh, to be in this mode. But you see here, all of the tools that you have available. So let's go back here to our, oops. Oh, I did not want to do that. All right, let me open my project back up. 
All right, so all of the tooling that you have available over here, all of this stuff, you're gonna notice it is available across the top up here. So all of the same tools are available. Everything you've got on desktop is available on your phone. Now I'm running this on an S23 Ultra. So this is definitely a big phone and a beefy phone and a capable phone. So let's go ahead and see, we'll run this guy. So you can go ahead and run it. Here it opens up uh, in a browser. This is another area I found a little bit uh, chunky to start because I find in this embedded browser, it doesn't, it doesn't scroll as much as I'd like. So what I often end up doing is actually opening it up in the dedicated browser over here. It seems to work a little bit better, but as you can see, you can preview your game directly inside of it. Uh, it's very handy in that regard. Uh, and then for some things, you're gonna to wanna to switch back to this screen. So for example, if you wanna do your coding, here is it in uh, portrait and here it is in landscape. I can understand how you might want to work in one and the other. Sometimes the screen layout just works a bit better. So let's say if I want to go ahead and add an action. So right here in the touchscreen controls, uh, if this has a touchscreen, then we're going to do these buttons and so on. So let's say we want to add something new, add an action. You can pick the object for that action to happen to. So the player, and then we could say um, draw debug. And then okay, so there, that is how you go ahead and code. Sometimes when there actually is a value you have to set, uh, it will pop up the keyboard uh, like so, uh, which can get a little bit you know, less ideal. But again, when you compare this to the mobile of working on something that actually requires coding, a lot of coding, uh, you generally need to have a dedicated keyboard. Well, in this case, especially when you're in this aspect ratio, so if I need to set a variable there, then when it pops up the keyboard, it's much more reasonable and usable. So like I said, there's going to be some things that you're going to want to work in this manner. And then there's some things you're going to want to work in this manner. But the biggest thing that I could bring away from this is it works. It's actually, it's almost other than you're going to fat finger on your device. So you can see here, you can obviously, you can do two pans scrolling around. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. And any of the choppiness you're seeing is actually from it uh, mirroring to my PC to be captured, not the actual thing itself. You have fine-tuned controls over your manipulators like this. Uh, it's, it's just like working on the desktop for the most part. Uh, it, it's a nice environment. All of your tools are available over here. Again, some things are going to obviously work better in certain layouts, but all of your tooling is available here. So all of your settings, it is exactly the same as being on the desktop. So if you wanna change things up, you can do so. And then the other cool thing is once again, it is, oh, and are we synchronized yet? No, we're not. So we're still, we're not live updating. There's not live sync going on. That's the only thing that's kind of missing at this point. And that's a really minor gripe because this is a gen one version of it uh, for Android. And this, this honestly works. It just works really, really well. All right, let's move that back up. So again, you're going to find some things if you want to control, if you're just working on your phone and you want to do some game development on the go, this is just a great experience in my humble opinion. Again, everything is integrated here. So all of the things that you will get from normal, the layout has been redone to obviously fit your screen correctly, but all of this stuff over here, so the building, the shopping and so on, it's all integrated down the side over here. So there is, here is the shopping over here. And then on the device, here is the shopping. Same stuff, you just get it kind of a slightly different uh, layout. So if you want access to the asset store, you can get there. If you wanna go into the tutorials and the documentation, they're all embedded in here as well. You can play other people's creations over here. Uh, and of course, you've got all the tutorials and lessons, but you're gonna probably start here. You're gonna find a ton of, so we'll get, we'll get out of that one right there. There's a ton of, um, examples to work from. So here's like a Metrovania style game that you can use, for example. Uh, let's open that guy back up. We'll switch to the main stage. So here is a Metrovania type game. And there is just a ton of learning resources that you can work with here. And again, the cool thing here is you work with it on your phone, you come back and you can read it in a browser, you work with it on uh, your Windows machine or your Mac machine or whatever. Uh, so yeah, G Develop just got, this kind of is a bit of a superpower to be honest, because I would honestly say, of the mobile, like on your phone, on the go development experiences I've had yet, this works exceptionally well. I'm very impressed with what they managed to pull off here. So that is the new mobile implementation it is available up on the asset store. So just head on over uh, to Google Play. It's linked in here. I'll link it in the linked article down below as well. So it is available. It is also free. Um, though, again, if you're gonna wanna have cloud storage and make all of this stuff work, what you're gonna probably wanna do is have access to this guy. I reviewed it in the past. There is a fanatical bundle out there so available up on fanatical.com, trusted website. I've 
done a number of bundles, of, like I've covered a number of their bundles in the past. The one that you're interested here is the Game Design for Everyone bundle. Uh, you pick this one up at the full tier for like 15 bucks US, you're getting a ton. But even at the $1 tier, uh, you're getting one month of gold subscription there, which will give you all the cloud saves and all the stuff that you need, etc. Whereas if you pick up the $15 one, you're getting uh, another 12 months total. So you're getting 13 months. So there's 12 months down here as well. You're getting 13 months subscription for like 15 bucks and then a ton of assets to get you up and going, plus a number of sample games and so on. So if you're interested in checking out GDevelop and you're looking for like a cloud package, it's hard to go wrong with this uh, currently running Fanatical bundle. So that is uh, the uh, GDevelop is now uh, available on mobile. Let's bring it back up on screen one last time. They, they just did, they did a very good job of this. It's the, the experience is just, it's pretty seamless. It, it's a pleasant way to work while you're on the, on the go. You just grab things, work with them. And I do find this one, for some reason, my editing ability, so selecting the object uh, is to uh, hard hold it to get it down there. Uh, but you see, it's easy to pan around, easy to manipulate things. Uh, it's just, it's a pleasant way to work. And again, it works in both aspect ratios. I've never tested on a lower end device. So this is on a pretty solid uh, Android device out there, but it's been flawless speed wise. And in terms of the form factor working on the screen, uh, it is also quite nice in that regard. I, I think they hit this one out of the park and I would highly recommend checking it out. First off, I, I like GDevelop quite a bit. And I think this mobile version of it, it just does fill that niche of game development on the toilet that I've honestly wanted since I was a little kid. Since I first started using the potty, my idea was, let's do game development on here. Now, maybe you have a more altruistic use for game development on the go, uh, but that's that's my biggest perk. And again, if you are uh, on the Apple side of the equation, I, I can't say anything for sure, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised that there is an Apple version in the works. So stay tuned and hopefully that will show up as well. Uh, so yeah, that is it. Uh, Game G develop on the Android device right now. Mobile development on the go has never been better in my opinion. And if you've got an opinion of a game development system on the go that works better than this, I would love to hear it in the suggestions down below. And uh, yeah, hopefully you found that interesting. All right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.